This just in, scientists have created robotic sperm. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> goodness. Sounds like it's out of a comic book, but it's actually true. And here to help explain is our friend, urologist Dr. Aaron Spitz. Welcome back. Thank you. Dr. Spitz. What was the delay? I mean, I've been waiting for this with bated breath. Well, you know, it's not exactly robo-sperm. Uh, what it is, is for a special circumstance in which the sperm can't move on their own, this is a little nano corkscrew device that actually wraps around the tail of the sperm, picks it up and carries it over to the egg where it attaches and then slips off. So it effectively picks up the sperm and drops it off. It's like a hmm. Uber for sperm. <laughs> One less thing for men to do. Do we have yeah. to do everything? Do we have to do everything? Okay. So yeah, you know, there's lazy, there's lazy guys, and these are lazy sperm. But it's actually, uh, it, it's a very specific kind of a condition that we're looking at, um, where the sperm are alive but they're not moving. In most cases, the sperm that aren't moving are dead, and this won't work with a, a dead sperm. It's got to be alive, be able to get its DNA into the egg's DNA. But this is a long way off, because right now, we have the technology to take a sperm that doesn't move but is alive and actually stick it into an egg with the yeah. in vitro fertility process. What these researchers are hoping to develop is a technique where sperm that don't move very well could fertilize the egg with insemination. So, okay, so this... I'm assuming that maybe this is headed towards a cheaper way of IVF? Well, that's a question mark because a lot of technology has to be perfected for this to work. First of mm. all, these sperm are being carried in this little coil in a magnetic field. And you have oh. to be able to subject a woman to a magnetic field that you can control and actually see at that level of resolution a sperm and an egg. And ultrasounds right now can see you know, a baby at a few weeks of development, but not an egg and a sperm. And the magnetic field uh, that can do this has got to be pretty sophisticated. I mean, my wife's got a lot of magnets on the refrigerator, but this is going to be something <laughs> a lot more intense than that. And by the time they develop that technology, it's entirely possible that the IVF technology will be so perfected and so much less expensive that this may be a moot point. But yeah. you know what I think this is important? Uh, obviously, as a gynecologist, we deal with a lot of fertility, and I always say, it takes two, and male factor infertility, when I trained, we were saying it was 30%. Now we recognize it's probably higher than that, right? Yeah, so it's a lot of times, 50%, the, about yeah. half of infertility issues deal with the male factor. So I True. think that. I'm happy to see any attention given to male infertility. Oh, I think they get enough you know. attention. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no. <laughs>